Hey guys, it's Jen from MyCray Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to make this kind of funny sign for your bathroom using wood, a Cricut machine, and some vinyl. It was so easy to make and so much fun to make and I hope that my kids will listen and know with the times that are going on today that it's very hard to come by toilet paper. So I thought this was kind of funny. I'm going to hang it up in my bathroom, but I'm going to show you step by step how I do it. So I'm gonna make a sign like this and I have my board here. I'm just trying to figure out how big to do it because I'm not putting a border around my sign, but instead I'm going to put like a rope around it. So I'm trying to figure out how wide, obviously it's gonna stay this wide, but I need to figure out how big I want my words. I want them a little bit bigger so you could read it. So I'm thinking about 10 inches by, I think this board's nine. And, um, then add two inches on each side on the top and the bottom with the rope. So it would be 14 inches for the whole board. So I'm gonna cut this board out at 14 inches and I'm gonna sand it and get it really smooth because when you apply vinyl, you need it to be smooth and nothing uh, attached to it. So I'm gonna cut it out at 14 and then I'll sand it. I have my board. And just because you put the vinyl just on one side, I like to do both sides and I like to do the edges as well. So I'm just going to sand this up really quick, both sides and all the edges. So one thing with sanding is you might or might not know, but when you sand it, you want to make sure you go with the grain. And then also, like I said, I do the edges because I don't like the rough edges. I like it to have a nice curved edge on it. So another thing is, is look at this board and you can see how nice and clean it is to what it was before. The more prep time you take, the better the vinyl is going to stick and the longer your piece is going to last. hunting and I found some stain that I'm going to use. I'm cheap. It was seven dollars. I got it on sale for a dollar. I like this wing. It's called Jacob Bean. Jacob Bean? I don't know how to say it. But I'm going to do it really lightly. My board is nicely sanded. I did the edges really well. I did the back as well so I'm going to stain the whole thing. All right guys, so this next part is going to be a lot easier. I'm in design space and I just need to write in my text to make my vinyl decal for my sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on shapes here and click on a square. And I'm going to change the width and the height to be 12 by 8. So I'm going to do that quick. I'm just going to click on the unlock box and then change it to 12 by 8. And the reason I did this is because now I can see how large my board is and it's going to make it much easier for me to center and make my words big enough for this sign. So I'm going to change the color quickly of this just to white. So this gives you a black outline, which is much better. So I'm going to move this just for a second. I'm going to go in the text box and I'm going to type in the first couple of words. I'm going to move this up. Whoops, I don't want both of them. So I'm just going to move this. Get rid of this again. And I'm going to change the font on this because if I continue going, it's not going to change the font. So with this selected, I'm going to go to font and I'm going to click on system. The reason I click on the system is because I don't pay for the Cricut access, so I do not get all the fonts for free. These are the ones that Cricut gives you for free or these are the ones that I downloaded from DeFont and put into Design Space. If you're interested in learning how to do that, a few videos back, I teach you how to do take the font from DeFont.com and put it into your Design Space. So I'm just going to click on one click on one that's a little bit thicker. And I kind of like how this looks. So I'm going to leave that and I'm just going to continue to work with the wording. So I'm going to double click on this so it brings the box up again and finish writing it. So here we go. You never know what you have until it's gone. So I want to align this. So I'm going to with it already selected, I'm going to go to the alignment and I'm going to click center. And then I can bring my box back and kind of eyeball it and see how big it is. So again, if I didn't know the size or have the box behind it, I would think this would be just fine. 
So I'm going to work with this, I'm going to unlock it, and I'm just going to move it over a little bit more to get the most out of the space up here. And the 12 by 8 is not the size of my board. My board is a little bit bigger than this, so I know that I can reach out to a 12 by 8. I'm going to shrink it up just a little bit. And in between here, I had a little, I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, I just looked up on Google uh, Leads. I found this one, so I'm just going to click on this and insert image. And here it is. Just a little something to kind of break them up. So I, I want two of these. So with this selected, I'm just going to hit duplicate. And then there's the other one. So I definitely don't want it to look like that. So I'm going to go up to flip and I'm going to flip it horizontally. And kind of work with it and leave it maybe like that. For right now, I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to go to the next um, writing part. So I'm going to click on text and write the next part. But I don't want both of these fonts to be the same. So I'm going to click on this and do the same thing. Go back to the font and then just search for something else that I like. That's a little bit bold still, but not the same kind of font. And I like this one, but I don't like how it has the little holes in it. So I'm just going to keep looking. So this one's kind of cool. It's kind of like funny looking, I guess. So I'm just going to... Do the same thing as before, double click on this and then just finish it. And then again I want it centered so it's already selected. I'm going to go to alignment and then center it. There we go. And again I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I don't want it as big as the one up top, but I want it big enough that you can read it. And then I can work with these guys a little bit. Maybe I'll make them a little bit small. Whoops. I move the box instead of the image. There you go. Make them a little bit smaller, maybe. Just something to break them up in between. Make this guy a little bit smaller. Move them over here. So I like how these look. So if I click on this, it's going to give me the box. So I'm going to click out of that, and I'm going to hold down the control button, and I'm going to click on this one and I'm also going to hold it down again and click on that one so it gives me that image so right now I'm going to attach those together I do not want those to move away from each other for the next part so since this is all selected together and this is all together the last thing I want to do is actually align everything so I'm going to click away I'm going to hit select all and then I'm going to go to the align button and center horizontally so that makes everything right directly in the middle. So here it is. I really like how it looks. The only thing I'm going to actually change is the font color. I think I'm going to leave the font white and then maybe make these little leaves brown. So I'm going to click away again and then I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down the control button and click on the first part. I still have the control button down and I'm going to click on the second part here. So it looks like it selected everything, but it only selected the wording. So I'm going to go up and change the color to that, to white. And then the same thing with these. Since I already attached these together, they are one piece. So I'm going to go in and change it to a brown color. And there we go. So this is all going to be white. My, my background of my sign is a stain brown color so I think that will go really good together I think one last thing is I maybe want to make this just a little bit bigger you don't have to use this as just something to break them up from each other so I like how it looks so I'm actually gonna go to make it and I'm just gonna cut it out really quick so since I did not attach my two words they are gonna be separate if you can see these whoops one thing I forgot to do was erase the um, the text box or the box here. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm glad it told me. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to get rid of that since that was just to know how everything was going to look together. So again I'm going to click make it and here we go. That's much better. So this is how it's going to print. This is how it's going to cut out. And because I don't want all this space here to go to waste, so I'm going to click on this, move it over, and then I'm going to take this little circle button and then just kind of turn the whole thing so I get it centered. 
and lined up with my line, and then I can move it up here. As close together as this other one that I can get my scissors in between these, and now I can cut it out as all one piece so I can save all this part and all this part. So just for next time, it gives me a little bit of a better, a bigger area for me to use next time. So I'm going to cut this out the way it is. Here's my brown one. And it's going to cut it out exactly how you see it, so I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and push OK on that one, push continue on this one, and then it's going to ask me to connect my machine. I have the Cricut Maker, so my, um, my screen might look a little bit different than yours. So I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to push, these are my favorites that I use all the time, stencil vinyl, copy paper, heat transfer vinyl. So I normally use this one, the stencil vinyl here. And it just cuts it out much better than any of the other programs, programmed ones on here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so I have it all cut out already and I had weeded this out. So here's the first part, but I wanted to show you this really cool light. I bought this off of Amazon. It's called a Cricut Bright Pad and it works really well, especially if you have light stuff that you can't see. Um, but I weeded this one out. I don't know where the other one just went. Oh, this one I weeded out as well. And I'm just going to do this one. And the first thing I like to do is take out the little spots that you don't need, like from the E's and the O's. I like to take those out first. Just makes it easier when I peel the whole thing off. But I'm just going to quickly take these out. So now I have all those off. Now I'm just going to take a the side of it and just start pulling it back. There, so I have it all finished. Here it is. And then this is going to go in the middle. Um, I'm going to grab my board really quick and then I'm going to put some uh, transfer tape on it. I'm going to put it all on here, spread it out really well, use my scraper that I have and scrape it on really well and then I'll show you how to apply it to the board. So I have my transfer tape on here uh, already and I used my squeegee and I squeegeed it really on really tight and here is my board that I had created. Um, it's nice and smooth, it's really dry. You want to make sure that it's smooth to the touch and that it's dry, that nothing's going to come off. So then you want to take your transfer tape and your vinyl and peel off carefully the back of the vinyl. And then place it on your board. But I want to make sure, I'm not going to put it on yet, I want to make sure that it's even on both sides and also at the top. So I'm going to put this down here at the bottom so I have little room for this um, little thing to go in as well. But you want to measure the sides. I like to just take a Cricut mat, mat and to just kind of go that way since I already have it here. So it's like a, a two on this side and we'll just measure this side and make sure. So it's actually perfect where I have it. And then you just kind of want to look at the top to see... Um, if it's even on every side before you go ahead and lay this down. So I'm just going to peel it up and look at the top and make sure that it is lined up perfectly. So I like how it is. And again, I have the sides here that I'm going to put um, rope around here. So just to give it a little bit more depth. So I'm just going to use my scraper, scrape it on really well. And this is why you want a dry and smooth so that it will stick to it, you won't get any bubbles, and it will stay on forever. So once you got it on, you just take an edge of your transfer tape, if I can find mine, and peel back slowly. And the reason I really like stain over paint is if you mess up on your paint, it will come up with your transfer tape. So I love using stain because you know it's going to stay there. And I'm just pushing down on the letters that are peeling up. And it's just the top for some reason that they're coming up on. Perfect. I love it already. So it's on. I'm just going to use my fingers and make sure that there's no 
parts coming up and it's very flat to me. So then I'm going to do the same thing for the next part. I have this one. So I'm just going to do the same thing, just peel it back slowly, making sure that it's stuck on. I already scraped it on. And then again, find the center of your spot. I just put it down gently and not push it in. Just use my mat. You can use, you know, a uh, tape measure, whatever you want. I just have this and I already see the lines and stuff and have the numbers on it. So it looks like it's three on the edge here. So I just want to make sure the same side. Looks pretty good. So once you get it where you want it, again, just push down really well. You use a trusty scraper, or if you don't have a scraper, you can use um, a credit card, whatever you have. I just have a bunch of scraps stuck on here I've never really cleaned off, but it works really well. I would suggest getting one if you do not have one, and just scrape it on really well. Get all those bubbles out, and then just do the same thing. I can find it. Peel back the transfer tape. Perfect. So again, I just use my fingers, go over it lightly, make sure it's not sticking up anywhere, and then I'm just going to do the same with the last part. There we go. So this part is all finished. It's on really well. If you have any parts that actually come up or anything on it, you want to push your fingers on it, or you can even take a hair dryer and lightly put it on here and just kind of push it as you go, and that will help stick on better. And also make sure that none of your pieces are going to come up. But these are sticking really well, so I won't have to do that. So I'm going to set up my next part to put the uh, twine around it. All right, so here's my finished board. I really like how it turned out. I'm going to put it up on my wall, and hopefully my kids will figure out what it's supposed to say. Um, and take care of the toilet paper. I did put some twine around it. Uh, I just secured it on the back and I put a hook on the back as well so I can hang it up on the wall. But here's the finished product. It didn't take me very long to do. You can follow the same procedure and make your own kind of sign. It doesn't have to say this, but I thought again for the time that we're going through right now, it'd be kind of funny to hang this up in the bathroom. So I'm just gonna hang it up really quick. <laughs> 